Hey everybody, it's Aluna Michaels, Esoteric Astrologer, coming at you to talk about the events of August 2023. Um, it's a little bit of an intense month. Um, we're going to have a Mercury retrograde, <clears throat> um, which again isn't the worst thing that ever happened. Um, well, it's, it's going to be running parallel with Mars. And that's interesting because, first of all, Mercury is going to retrograde in Virgo, which can be especially when the Mercury is turning retrograde, it can be anxious. And like Virgo, it brings out issues about perfectionism, um, worry, you know, and it's a time that we can reflect on these things, right? That's what Mercury retrograde is all about that. Like reflecting on how we're dealing with that theme of each sign that it would retrograde through. And then Mars is energy, you know, so Mars in Virgo is, is great for getting things done, checking off lists, getting into gardening, being into nutrition, um, but, and also it can drive perfectionism, like the negative part of it, you know? So when you're having, um, Mercury with Mars, it could be meditating about how you, how you wear down your nervous system by worrying. Um, where do you plant your faith or like, cause you know, Virgo is that idea of the plants and the roots and instead of like having this live wire kind of all over the place energy nervous squirrels like with Virgo you know so it can be about how you're grounding and centering and that could be having really good nutrition it could be deep breathing it could be being keeping your feet on the earth at some point of the day or laying on the ground um, getting really good sleep doing kind of basic self-care kind of things the other thing can be inner dialogue you know how, how what if you're nervous like what are you saying to yourself what's the undercurrent that is going on that makes you feel the way you feel, you know? So Mercury retrograde with Mars can be looking at those things. Then you're dealing with other people who are just stressed by this because Mercury's communication and Mars can be aggressive. So you can get people who are short tempered or they're anxious about their own deadlines or their lives and they're like, whoa, they're not being kind to you because they're stressed. So, and that's really going on, not the whole month, but when I look down, I'm looking at my ephemeris here, right? The, uh, all the numbers and planets. Um, <clears throat> so that would, it kind of gets started like the second week of August and goes, um, yeah, kind of the second, third, second, third and fourth weeks of August. So it's kind of a fifth week there. Um, and, and Mercury doesn't go retrograde until like the 20, 23rd of August, but it's starting to slow down. I'm doing this here on the 4th, and it's it, we're going into that window of time, right, before the retrograde. And um, so it's starting to bring up some of that tension just because we're, we're going to the retrograde and we're going to do it with Mars. So I know what's going on, Mercury can say, you know. So to prepare yourself for that, to be doing like, I'm going to have more self-care. I'm going to have more time for meditation and um, again, just even simple breathing, you know, and, and observing other people's levels of stress and saying, all right, is this going to impact me or not or whatever. Um, so, um, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Got a lot of beeps on my cell phone. So the month doesn't have to be super tense because one of the other things is that Jupiter is there in Taurus, which is trining the Mercury retrograde and the, um, the, the Mars. And Jupiter is that sense of like of being of having faith, of feeling that you're not just alone with your thoughts and alone with your schedule. Like there's some sort of reason for this, or some sort of goodness behind all of this, or some purpose, you know. And keeping in touch with that purpose, whether it's your meditation or gardening and grounding yourself, and, and all of this kind of thing that would make you feel there's a reason <laughs> method. So some sort of method in the madness here so that Jupiter is there kind of um, creating goal setting because this is a great time for goal setting too with Mercury Mars just making sure that they're kind goals and that's where the Jupiter is gentler and can kind of rein in that eh, slave driving way that the Mars and Virgo could get you know um, and say yeah these things are meaningful to me I do want to reach back in my past or however that was last month or something and say, yeah, I do want to do these things. You know, these are important to me and I want to work them into my schedule in a, a gentle sort of way, you know, so you can tap into what's meaningful to you because of the um, Jupiter with that Mercury retrograde as well. 
Um, okay, so another thing is, um, and some people get all anxious about this sort of stuff, but a bunch of planets are turning retrograde and then going direct like toward the end of the month. We've got, of course, the Mercury's turning retrograde, um, yeah, like August 23rd. We've got Uranus going to go backwards, uh, retrograde on the 29th of August. Venus is going to go direct like the first few days of September, and then Jupiter is going retrograde the first few days of September. So um, we've got four planets shifting direction. Um, and also there'll be a full moon right at like the 30th of August. So just, you know, I had someone say to me, like, I'm really good at pivoting. I'm like, oh, that's a good term. And so all this energy is sort of pivoting. It is about adaptability. And it's not, again, the worst thing that ever happened because planets are shifting direction. Something's always generally retrograde or direct. It's fine. Um, but when they all happen at once, and then there's that, you know, there's been that Mercury Mars, which is like kind of getting on yourself. And then even this full moon that's going to happen, the sun and the moon are always opposite each other with the full moon. But the planet Saturn will be with the moon, which again can be, this inner critic stuff. So it's that whole challenge of the month. It's like staying poised, um, adapting, and and maybe just cutting yourself some slack or giving yourself a pass if you do lose your temper or you don't get everything done or you feel a little wobbly. And it's like, okay, you know, let's just rebalance and keep moving, you know, and being gentle with yourself about that. And maybe having some humor about it too, if you can. Um, so let's see, what else here? Um, I might have almost covered what I want to say. Well, also, Mars is going to change signs. You know, Mars changes signs every, you know, six or eight weeks. And Mars is going to go into Libra. That's the other thing that happens at the end of um, August. So Mars is kind of, it's feisty, right? So it's been with the Mercury, and then it's just, Mercury will go backwards, and Mars just continues on into Libra. Um, so that changing of signs is an energy, so just a lot of energy those last few days of the month, you know? Um, and because Libra is about relationships, it can be great for, again, setting goals in relationships, finding out how to be more close, because Libra is that one-on-one -on -one connection. Um, so spending quality time together, things like that, or what kind of relationship are you seeking if you're single and that kind of a thing. But it also is, um, it, it can be a little edgy because that Mars just right when it goes into Libra can feel like it's the other person you know there's something about wanting to pass the buck you know and we've just come out of that Mars Mercury so again thinking like okay let me not be reactionary if I'm feeling edgy and if other people are doing it to kind of you know set some limits but no they'll probably come back and apologize and you know everyone's a little it's a little it's just a lot of energy you know so it's a matter of how you're channeling all that and some people don't channel their energy well you know um so making this a little bit short i think but it's kind of the main gist of all of this is kind of riding the ups and down little waves and then it will even out again in, in september um but i'm trying to think of any other thing to say about the um mercury retrograding with mars and virgo but i i mean don't underestimate because virgo is simple simple things of feeling safe if it's having regular meals like regular meal times regular sleeping and waking up um can help during this time that sounds sort of boring like but just having like your nervous system can feel safer when you know meals are coming when sleep is coming and then it can let the variations of other things not feel so stressful um, so that can help the deep breathing again, even if it's a few minutes a day, um, repeating some sort of mantra, um, even if it's, you know, whatever, if you're in traffic and you're late, you know, it's like all is well or something like that. And that kind of repetitive, um, sort of cycle. So instead of getting into a negative, I'm not putting Virgos down, please don't hear that, but when Virgo gets stressed, it gets squirrely. And it gets um, um, like running in circles, like a little gerbil wheel in your mind. And to say, what's a positive gerbil? If I'm going in a gerbil wheel, let's go on a positive one. I'm saying, um, all is well, all is well. Or I am safe, I'll get to work and everything's fine. Or, you know, um, this kind of a thing. And then when you're feeling more balanced, what's the solution here? If it's 
homework and saying you're going to be late or, you know, taking a step from there out of a balanced space, you know? So, um, and again, it can be also want to say there's something too about Mars and Virgo can be about talents you have that you overlook because you think they're so basic, but they're actually special. And that Mercury retrograde can be somebody else seeing you in a different way. That like, oh wow, that that is a marketable skill that I have, or a kindness that I have. So, and again, that goes back to being able to see yourself with more gentle eyes. You know? Okay. So it's a little bit short, but I need to be get more stuff. If there's nothing too much more to say about all of that. Um, and oh, there was one more thing I actually had was um, Mars opposing Neptune. Um, as Mars gets to the end of Virgo, it'll oppose Neptune, which is in Pisces. And, and that can be, you know, watching out for unrealistic expectations, because if you're feeling gummed up with the Mercury retrograde and I'm behind schedule, again, there's that idea of um, promising more than you can deliver because you're nervous or stuff like that. And again, it's just everyone's feeling nervous. Um, everyone's feeling a little out of their schedule and trying not to overpromise and think, I can't really do this, you know, or this is too much or just kind of be realistic, making sure you're being realistic during that, that, that so it's that last week of August. Okay. So, and thanks. I didn't say anything, but thank you to the guys at Know Thyself Podcast for promoting me and being so kind. And if anybody wants a session, of course, you can contact me through my website, alunamichaels.com or my phone, 248-583-1663. That's below in the YouTube description. Um, if you're getting it on my email, you know, how to get me um and well thanks for listening and um i'll see you next month and bye bye for now